With a snowstorm pounding the Midwest, Mike Valier and Chad Lathrop head back to hunt the big 11 pointer they call High Roller. Well, here we go. Second gun here in Iowa. We are headed into the heart of the storm. It's 12 degrees, 25 mile an hour winds, blowing snow, and the ground's kind of ice covered. We got a little ice too. We, uh, boy, we were, we were 15 minutes away from being heroes yesterday, potentially. Snuck into the blind and bumped a couple, one good one for sure. I don't think it's the deer we're after. High roller's the deer that we're after. It's a buck that Chad named. Um, he's kind of, he's kind of gotten by us this year. We've been close a couple different times. Um, I've had him at 40. Chad's had him within 30 on a couple occasions. Um, so I kind of renamed him Felix because he's got nine lives. This thing just, we're so close, but yet so far, just like you, like you often are with these big bucks. But so last night was pretty much like nails on a chalkboard. We snuck in, bumped deer on our way in, had deer come into the plot, spook. Wind was supposed to be southeast. It ended up being east, straight east and northeast, which was not the right wind for where we were set up. And uh, it, it was it was a long, stressful night. Uh, we don't really like bumping deer, and we pretty much did it all night long. So um, we're headed back in there tonight. Nasty, cold, brutal. Um, kind of one of those nights where you're wondering, are they just going to you know, tuck in in bed all day and, and not even really feed or is it going to really push him to get out there and feed feed early? So we're headed in a little bit earlier than what we normally have been getting in and uh, hopefully the right one shows up. So we're going to get in there, try and catch up to High Roller or Felix or some other big buck here in Iowa. So we're going to give it a shot. sweated up when he got this much clothes on. Lots of times we can come through the field to access this, but that's with the southwest, southeast wind. Today we got northwest coming in the back way. Probably blow the whole field out again like yesterday. Hopefully not. As Mike and Chad make the final dash to their blind, 15 miles to the south, I'm taking our daughter Jordan to a redneck blind that overlooks a big and beastie food plot. The evening of December 17th was bitterly cold. Inside the redneck blind we had the LP heater going and we were able to stay reasonably warm. That allowed Jordan and I to sit comfortably all afternoon. I seriously doubt I could have gotten her out there any other way. Blinds are absolutely the key to spending quality time with your children when hunting. I grew up shooting Easton aluminum arrows back in the early 1990s and relied on their accuracy and durability to get the job done in tournaments and in the field. 25 years later, the Easton Full Metal Jacket, a carbon core wrapped in aluminum, is my arrow of choice. I love the small diameter for increased penetration and medium heavy weight for downrange kinetic energy. I originally planted this plot to soybeans, but due to dry conditions they never produced. In early August I drilled Big and Beastie into the beans using the RTP Genesis Cedar. Having a tool that provides this level of flexibility is a definite advantage when trying to create the best possible food plots. Truck cameras have become a super important part of our hunting strategy now. On the new Muddy Trail cameras, we have fast trigger speeds, time-lapse mode on the ProCam 12, and very crisp, sharp nighttime images. So you can tell what you're looking at. These are all factors that help us to better identify and pattern the bucks that we're hunting. Back at Mike's blind, the two hunters are shocked when the first deer of the evening enters the field. You got all the time in the world, buddy. Be careful now. You got all the time. Yeah. Uh, I thought I was seeing probably a 90 to 100. I'd let him quarter away kind of hard. It was me, but it's up to you. You do what you want. 
words can't describe this. This is, this deer's had our number. He's, he's, he's a visible giant deer. Um, we, we've had a bunch of encounters with him. Chad's pretty much set his sights on this deer and it comes to gun season and you know, we're in here together and it, it, it doesn't get any better. We've logged a lot of hours in a tree together over the years. Moments like this just don't happen at all and it's just so cool. It's, it's such a rush, it's just an awesome deer. First deer on the plot today, yesterday. We, you, you couldn't have messed up a food plot more than what Chad and I did yesterday. And we just felt we're usually really good about that, about access and doing everything right. And, you know, we thought today, man, maybe they'll feed, maybe we won't see a deer, we don't know, but we just had to stick in here on this deer. And <sighs> doesn't get any better. That's why we do what we do. Throughout the fall, you'll see us using our Cabela's Deluxe Whitetail Fanny Pack. It's small, lightweight, compact, and will attach to just about anything. We can put our grunt call in here, binoculars, range finder, all kinds of other accessories. And the nice thing with the Fanny Pack is once you get up in the stand, you can buckle it around a limb or the tree itself to avoid taking up much space. Cabela's offers several choices for great tree stand packs. You can check them all out over at cabelas.com. Accuracy is always the most important goal for any shot. That is why as the arrow speeds increase, I shoot mechanical heads. Rocket has been making accurate mechanical heads since the early 1990s. They were one of the first companies to produce these models and their time proven designs still work today. I've never liked the idea of dumping minerals on the ground forcing the deer to eat dirt. Not only is the resulting hole unsightly, it just never made sense. When I switched to Trophy Rock, I was able to keep my mineral sites off the ground, in my case, on stumps. A bow sight doesn't have to be complex to be effective. Good sights merely need to be rugged with durable pins, and they need to have bright aiming points that you can see during every minute of legal shooting time. That is what we get with Fuse Sights, rugged simplicity. When setting up close to buck bedding areas on public land, all of our gear has got to be totally silent. That's why we choose the Muddy Vantage Point tree stand. It has silent straps with no metal on metal contact and multiple platform adjustments to fit in just about any tree. Back in our redneck blind, I'm fighting foggy windows, but the deer movement is picking up. The buck we hope to see this evening is an older one with limited genetics that we have named Krusty 3. This buck showed up here regularly throughout November. Back in 2012, Jordan killed the second buck in the Krusty family line from this same blind. They're hoping for a repeat performance tonight. Well, here it is, December 17th, second to last day of second gun season, and it all came together. It's, you can't really use words to describe how sweet this is. We put a lot of time, a lot of effort into chasing these whitetails, and it's almost hard to believe when it actually works. We spend so much time failing at it day after day, week after week, 
finally came together for Chad and I. Just doesn't, doesn't get any better than this. Had pictures of him last year, late season. He had broke G2s on both sides, and he's a deer that pretty much took up our season. We've, we've been hunting him all year. Chad's had multiple encounters with him. He's gotten the better of us on a couple different sets, and he's, he's just seemed to get away from us. But tonight, second to last day of second gun season, felt the need to feed, came to our cut corn, standing corn plot, and gave us, gave us a crack at him. So couldn't be happier. Just doesn't get any better than this. As Mike and Chad celebrate the conclusion of their quest for high roller, Jordan and I watch as deer feed heavily in the Big and Beastie. Surprisingly, the evening ends without sighting a mature buck. Jordan and I were set up over this frigid forage Big and Beastie food plot where we've had tons of success over the years. Big and Beastie is a great choice for late season hunting. These bucks were pawing down through the snow to get to the leaves and the bulbs. Ozonics devices electronically change oxygen molecules into ozone molecules, which are unstable. As they rain down from the ozonics unit, these unstable oxygen molecules try to stabilize by grabbing carbon molecules wherever they can find them. Human odor is primarily carbon-based, so the ozone eats up the scent molecules as the two gases mix in the airstream downwind of your stand. There are only three ways you can get busted in a tree stand. The deer can smell you, hear you, or see you. To reduce the chances of being seen, we wear the best camouflage we can. Real trees open patterns perfectly blend into the hardwood timbers that we hunt. Several of our pro staff members shoot the Hoyt Power Max because it is one of the best values on the market. The Power Max has many of the same features found on other Hoyt bows, with the biggest difference being its cast riser instead of machined. If you are looking for a great budget bow, check out the Power Max. The next day, the weather is cold and clear as Jordan and I head back to the same blind, optimistic that something older will show up on the food plot. At the same time, Sean Ferendorf is back on public land hoping to fill his tag. Though he finds a great food source, surprisingly the deer sign is minimal and his evening ends without a single deer sighting. For Jordan and me, the activity is steady as a parade of bucks enters the food plot. Even in lightly pressured areas, whitetails are extremely skittish during the late season. A distant deer, acting nervous, alerts the group of bucks in front of our blind and they exit the field dashing our hopes of seeing Krusty Three on this night. Late season is feast or famine. It can be tremendously productive, but it can also be very testing. If you can keep the deer from knowing you are hunting them, time is your ally. With several weeks left in the season, there is no reason to push. Weather systems, fronts really, warm or cold, both will get them moving. Just watch the weather and wait. No longer do we have the rut to spur buck activity like we did when we were chasing November.